Hi everybody, this is Eduardo Suarez. We're going to continue today with our Vision 2D. On my previous videos, I showed you that there are basically two configurations that we need to do in our Vision. If we go to Robot, Internet Explorer, and then we go to our Vision, and we select Vision Setup, one of the configurations is the camera data, where we're going to configure the camera settings and do the camera calibration. With this process, you're going to determine the relationship between the camera pixels and the distance in millimeters. And also, you're going to get um, relevant information about the position of the camera relative to the calibration grid, the position of the cal calibration grid relative to the application user frame, and the position of the robot holding the camera. The other process involved in our vision is the vision process tools, where you're going to determine the process that you want to use. For example, in the 2D single view vision process. With this process, you're going to identify the part that you want to find using the GPM locator tool. And then you're going to determine the offset from the reference position using the offset data calculation tool. Now, if we look at the vision setup configuration, it can be broken down into two different configurations, as I showed you on my previous videos. One is a fixed mounted camera, where the camera is mounted on the stand. And the other one is the raw mounted camera where the camera is mounted on the Enron tooling. Also, I show you that there is some workflow with a series of steps that we need to follow. For that, we can go to uh, IR Vision Tutorials. And depending on the configuration, either if we are using the fixed mounted camera or the raw mounted camera, you can find all the steps that you need to follow. For the configuration. But before you can start with this workflow, the first thing that you need to do is to configure the user tool and the user frame. Also, one important thing that you need to do is to configure the calibration grid frame. And this calibration grid frame can either be a user frame or a user tool depending on where the part to be found is located. The following picture is going to illustrate what I'm talking about. On the picture on the left, the part is located on a table, and the working area where we're going to offset the robot is a user frame. So the calibration grid frame is also going to be a user frame. On the picture on the right, the robot is holding the part that we're going to find. So in this case, where we're going to offset is the tool frame, and also the calibration grid frame is going to be a tool frame. One important thing to notice in here is that if the working area is a user frame, that is, if the part is located on a table, it can be either be a fixed mounted camera or the raw mounted camera, but still the calibration grid frame is going to be a user frame, as we can see on these pictures. On this video, we're going to consider the parts located on a table. And what I'm going to show you today is another way to set the calibration grid frame. We saw already that the calibration grid frame can be set up using the four point method. That is, we select an arbitrary user tool where we're going to locate the a pointer. And then we set the calibration grid on a plane parallel to the plane where the part is. And we teach the four points, the orient origin, the x-direction, the y-direction, and the system origin. There is also another way to set the calibration grid frame, and that is the automatic calibration that doesn't require any touch-up. This method is more accurate than the touch-up method because it is automatically done by the robot. This is a work cell I have already created. If we open the teach pendant and we go to status, we can select order FI. And in here you can, you can see that I have already installed 
the package Air Vision 2D, the R685. The R685 We're going to split the screen and the other thing I've done, I have already installed the camera. If we go to the tooling, we select the user tool number one. I have already installed the camera on the NRM um, tooling and the way that you're going to do that is as I showed you on the previous video, you can select the user tool one and add the camera from the CAD library. The other thing I've done, I selected on Vision and enabled the Vision simulation and in Vision process I added the camera to the port one. Two more things that I have already done, I have configured a user tool in this case, the user tool is going to be just a pointer that if you have enough imagination, you can think this is going to be a suction cap at the end of the pointer. And the other thing I've also done is that I selected a user frame already. I have user frame number one. And you can see here that the user frame number one is on the plane of the table where the part is going to be located. One important thing to highlight in here is that we really need two user frames. One user frame that's going to be the, we're going to call it the application frame. That is the user frame where your points in the program are going to be taught. And you're going to find that this application frame is also called the offset frame. And then we have a second user frame that is called the calibration grid frame. And on this frame, is where all the mathematics want to happen. For example, in the case of a GPM, this is going to determine the position of the GPM. It's going to calculate the offset from the reference position, and it's going to apply the offset to the application frame, also called the offset frame. Another important point to highlight is that these two frames do not need to be the same. For convenience, in most of the cases, we can overlap the two, these two frames, so the offset is going to be one to one. Whatever offset that we find in the calibration grid frame is going to be applied in the same amount to the application frame. But again, doesn't necessarily be the same. We can have these two frames in completely different locations, and the robot is going to be smart enough to give us the correct location of the GPM. And I'm going to show you later how these two frames are used in the vision calibration. We're going to select the table and we're going to replace the part with the calibration grid. So we're going to select the cone rod and we're going to make it invisible. And then we're going to select the calibration grid and we're going to edit the position. The next thing that we're going to do, I'm going to show you here the position register that I have. I have a position register one, that's the home position. That's the robot position that we have right now. And I have the position register number two, that's going to be the calibration position one. And a position register number three, that's going to be the calibration position two, that I'm going to show you later how it works. So for the moment, we're going to select position register number two, and we're going to move the robot to this position. So this is a position where we're going to take the pictures and do the calibration grid. So next thing is going to be, we're going to select menu, we're going to select higher vision, and we're going to select Vision Utilities. And in Vision Utilities, you're going to see that we have 
two menus that's going to be the automatic grid frame setting and the vision lock menu so we're going to select the automatic grid frame setting we want to press detail and in here we have the setting for the automatic grid frame so the first thing we want to do we want to select the robot group number to be used in this case it's going to be the robot group number one next is going to be the user frame or user tool in this case because we have a part of the table we want to select the user frame and then we need to select the user frame number for the calibration grid frame in this case we want to select the user frame number two if we go to the menu set up frames and we're going to select the user frames I have already a user frame number one that's the one that we're using for the table and we're going to select the user frame number two for the calibration grid frame if you want to select in here from user frame to user tool you can just change this one in here from user, a user tool to user frame so we're going to continue we're going to select the camera name the um, camera that we have selected is the the only one that is available that um, is C 130 EF and then we need to select the exposure time this is going to be relevant only when we have the um, in the real world the um, start position is going to be the position that we have in here and in this case I have already recorded but in your case we need to record that so you want to press shift and record and it's going to show recorded and the next step is going to be selecting the grid spacing in my case I'm selecting a grid that has some three millimeters spacing between the, the dots so from this point the next thing that we need to do is going to be uh, execute this application you're going to notice in here that the settings results is showing in blank because um, we haven't determined yet the um, calibration grid frame so we're going to press shift and we're going to press execute and you're going to see that the robot start moving automatically and taking several pictures and determine the position of the dots and adjusting the calibration grid frame one important thing in here is that you have to keep pressing the shift key all the time the moment that you release the shift key the process is going to stop you can see here on the top that the frame has been updated and the execution of the grid frame set is was successful so we're going to press OK and now we can see here that the, this is the setting result that the focal distance is going to be 12 millimeters the scale is 0 0.35 millimeters per pixel and the mean error and the maximum error so when you look at this result then the mean error and the maximum error you're looking at the value that should be less than five probably even less than one so the result that we have in here has a very good result the error is almost minimal so now what we're going to do we're going to select again the user frame we're going to update the user frame and you're going to see here the result so you can see here that this is the result for the user frame that was calculated automatically using the robot so one important thing that I want to show you here is that we can minimize this one and we can go back to this picture in here if you have 
a fixed mounted camera, then in this case, you are not able to move the camera automatically with the robot. But still, you can apply this automatic grid frame uh, settings using another camera mounted on the internal tooling. So the same way that we, hit, we did already. So then this process can be done either if you have a robot mounted camera or you have a fixed mounted camera. In our case, we have already our user frame one that's going to be our application user frame that is um, user frame number one but if you want to overlap the application frame with the calibration grid frame what you're going to do you can uh, repeat the same process again using the um, automatic grid calibration frame and changing it to the user frame number two to user frame number one Another option for that would be creating a new program, a TP program, that is going to copy the user frame 2 to the user frame 1. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So we want to select, we want to press select, we want to create a new TP program. We can call it copy user frame. And we want to add a new lines. And on these lines, we want to set and put an instruction. And what we want to do, we want to copy a position register. We can use position register number six, that is frame and we're going to use user frame and we're going to select user frame number two so now we are copying the user frame number two to position register number six and the next thing is going to be copy the position register number six to the user frame number one We want to select frames, we want to select user frame, we want to select user frame number one, and we want to select position register number six. And in this case, when you run the program, you're copying the user frame number two to the user frame number one, and both user frames are, are going to overlap. So now that we have the user tool we have the application user frame and we have the calibration grid user frame we can go to the vision processes so we're going to select robot we're going to go to the internet explorer we're going to select our vision we're going to select vision setup and we're going to create a new vision data <clears throat> we're going to call it camera one and we're going to select the 2d vision is going to be the 2d camera we're going to press ok and we're going to press edit and now we are in the st first step of the camera setup just remember that this is exactly the same that we have done in the past on the previous video. We're going to select the camera, the C130EF2. You can see here that it took a snapshot, the RoboMonte camera. We're going to select yes. And the RoboHolder camera is going to be this robot on group one. The axis model camera is going to be the last axis. We are on the internal tooling. We are going to skip all these settings. This is going to be none, only when you are in the real world. And in the calibration, we are going to select grid pattern calibration. 
And here you have other options. It's going to be the robot gener generated grid calibration or no calibration. And we have a green check mark on the camera setup. Now we're going to select the calibration setup. And on the application frame, we're going to select the user frame number one. For grid spacing, we're going to select 30 millimeters. Robo health calibration grid, we're going to select no. And the setting calibration grid position method is going to be the user frame. We're going to save. And we're going to go to the next step. That's going to be the calibration grid location. The calibration grid frame, we're going to select the user frame number two. And the calibration grid position setup, we're going to take a snapshot and we're going to press set. And it's giving us in here the position of the calibration grid relative to the application user frame. Just remember that for this, we need to make sure that the robot is in the calibration position one, exactly the same as we have done the automatic calibration grid frame setting. Now we're going to go to calibration and for the number of planes here we're going to do something different that we have done on the previous videos. We're going to select two planes and the difference between using one plane and two planes is that the two planes is going to be more accurate. Now we need to select the first plane. For that again, we want to make sure that we are in the calibration position one. So we're going to take the position register number rule to calibration position one, and we're going to make sure that we are there. So we're going to press shift mode two. And now we're going to take a snap and we're going to press find one. And for that, we're going to move the points to have all the points inside the window. And we're going to press OK. Now we have the pound position for the first plane. And now we need to select the second plane. Now for the second plane, what we're going to do, we can uh, select a position register number three and save it as the same position that we have for position register number two. And then we can go to position and change the Z axis by 100 millimeters. So you're gonna see here that if we go to position register number two, the Z axis is 791.9 millimeters. And if we go to the position register number three, the Z axis is 691 millimeters. So we moved 100 millimeter on the Z axis. Another important thing in here is that the um, vision line for the camera has to be perpendicular to the um, application frame and the position that we want to move the robot has to be only on the Z axis. We cannot move it on the X, on the Y, and we cannot rotate the um, axis. And the reason that we're using 100 millimeters is because we want to make sure that the camera is still in focus. If you move more than 100 millimeter, chances are that you're going to be out of focus. So now we're going to move to this position. We're going to press Shift, Move to. 
we are now in the calibration position two. We're going to go back to here, and before we select Find Tool, we need to take another snapshot. And you're going to see now that we are closer. So now we're going to select Find Tool, and again we're going to select the control points to have all the points of the calibration grid inside the window. The um, important thing in here that we always need to have the four big points for the X axis and the Y axis inside the window. We're going to press it OK and we have the found position for the second plane. We're going to save and we're going to go to calibration points and you can see here all the points for the plane 1 and the points for the plane 2. And you can see here the error that is really a very small error that we have. And all the points are in green. We're going to go to the calibration result and here you can see that it determines that the focal distance is going to be 12 millimeters, the standard of distance is going to be 802.2 millimeters, the distortion is zero, the maximum lens distortion is zero, and the scale is going to be 0 0.354 millimeters per pixel, and we have the main error, the maximum error, and again we have the position of the camera relative to the calibration grid the position of the calibration grid relative to the application user frame and the position of the robot holding the camera. So we're going to save and one important thing in here that what we're doing here we are on the edit screen. If we don't save the result this is not going to be saved on the robot controller. So if we're going to get the data on the robot controller we need to press save and then we can end the edit. So now the next step is going to be creating the vision process. So we're going to press create again. And in here we're going to select the vision process tool. And uh, we're going to select the 2D single view vision process. We're going to give it a name visual process 2D and we're going to press OK. Now we're going to press edit and we have in here on the parent tool for the vision process. On the parent tool we're going to select the camera. We're going to be in camera 1. Number to find, we're going to select, we're going to find one part. The offset mode is going to be fixed frame offset. And what we're going to do, you can see here that we're looking at the calibration grid. So we need to take the calibration grid off and put the part in there. So we're going to select the table, we're going to make the calibration grid invisible, we're going to select the con rod, we're going to make it visible, and we're going to set the position. We're going to go back to the vision process and we can take a snap and we need to do one more thing. We need to move the robot to the first position. So we're going to go back to the calibration point one.
and still we need to move the part to be inside the view and there we are so the offset frame is going to be the user frame and in here we're going to select the application user frame 1 as the offset frame I want to pause in here for a moment and explain you how the offset data works if we look at the following picture we're going to consider that the position of the plus mark is the found position of the workpiece. On the picture on the left, this is going to be the reference position. That is the position where we want to teach the points on the TP program. And it's also the position that IR Vision is using as a reference. And the robot says this information internally. On the picture on the right, This is the current position of the workpiece, also called the actual position. If we want to calculate the offset, we can do a simple subtraction between the current position and the reference position. However, there are some limitations if we follow this approach, as we're going to see in the following illustration. In the following picture, the position of the capital M mark is a reference position and is a position on the lowercase m is the actual position. Let's imagine that the row is going to move from the point A to the point B, then to the point C and go back to point A. In the case, if the part moves, if we want the robot to follow the same path again, we also need to find the actual position of the points A, B, and C. That means that we need to calculate the offset of each point individually. So instead of calculating each point um, individually, higher vision is using an offset frame when it uses the offset frame the position of the workpiece relative to the offset frame is always the same so if the part moves the offset frame also moves accordingly we can see in this case that instead of calculating the offset of each individual point it's just moving the origin of the um, offset frame and changing the orientation so our vision is going to output the movement of the offset frame as an offset data and since it's not a physical movement of the workpiece this information is not a, always an intuitive value that we can look at so i hope this information sheds some light on how the offset data works now we're going to go back to the vision process and we're gonna go to the snap tool we're gonna select the snap tool so we're gonna take a snap and we're gonna press set and we're gonna move the window to select the part that we wanna look at Um, resolution reduction we are going to keep it in none this is going to be the image size the exposure mode is going to be fixed and we are not going to change any of these settings we are going to select now the GPM locator tool and we need to teach the part so we are going to press teach and we are going to move the points 
to select the window of the part and we're going to press OK. So in this case, if we want to do any training mask, we can select edit, we can select the emphasis area, and we're not going to make any changes to this. We're going to keep the threshold to 70%. And we need to select the origin. So we're going to select the origin, and in this case, we're going to select this point over here as our origin so this is going to be a reference points point that we want to use for uh, teaching the point on the tp program we're going to press ok we want to keep the degree of freedom from minus 180 degrees to plus 180 degrees. We can change the scale or we can change the aspect ratio if we need to. And we're going to go now to the offset data calculation tool. So the reference data to be used is going to be static. We need to find out the part C height. We're going to go back to the work cell. We're going to select the measurement tool. And we have the Z offset is going to be 20 millimeters. So we're going to select in here 20 millimeters and we're going to press set for the reference position status and in, giving in here the uh, reference on the x on the y and the rotation you can see here that it took 857 milliseconds to find the part so if the time is too long we can reduce that by changing the points that we want to find so we can go back to the GPM and instead of looking for each point on the part we just do a masking so we can edit the mask we can select the pen tool we can check the thickness and we can just paint the area that we are not interested in looking at. If we go back to the offset data calculation and now we take a snap, you're going to see that the time it just reduced a little bit. Now we are in 646 milliseconds. So we can save this and just end the edit. And now we can go back to our work cell. We're going to open the teach pendant and we're going to create the TP program. I have the TP program already created in here. I call it pick. 
we're going to select this one and we're going to move step by step so we're going to select the user frame number zero that's going to be the world we're going to select the user tool number one we're going to go to home then we're going to go to the position register number two that's going to be the calibration position one and now we're going to wait and this wait is important because we want to make sure that the robot motion finished before we take a picture we want to run the vision process and then we want to calculate the offset we can look at the vision register and we can see here that the offset is zero because we are looking at the reference position for the part we're going to continue with the program we want to change now the user frame to the application frame and we're going to move to the approach position that we're going to have a um, position register number four as an z offset and also we have the offset given by the vision register we're going to go to the peak position and we can see here that our peak position is going to be on the point that we have selected now we're going to run the simulation program and we're going to go to the retract position and we're going to go back to home again and in the case that the vision failed we want to have a label 99 as in showing here so now the next thing we want to do we want to change the position of the part we want to select the part in here we're going to select edit and we're going to move the part I'm going to move it slightly because the part is too big and it may get out of the field of view and I'm going to rotate it slightly We want to run the program again. We took a snapshot and now we can see that there is an um, offset. And we can also see that the power was inside the field of view. Just remember that this offset is going to be the frame offset, so we cannot relate directly this offset to the position of the part relative to the reference position that's why the number is so strange but something probably we can relate is going to be the uh, R in this case is 11.8 degrees if we look at the part we can move 11.7 degrees we're going to go to the approach position and we're going to go to the peak position and we can look in here that the peak position was able to take the offset and now we are in the same point on the workpiece
To summarize what we have done today, I'll show you another way to calculate the calibration grid frame. Instead of using the touch up method, we use the aromatic calibration grid frame setting. This method is more accurate because instead of relying on our ability to, cho to touch up the points, we are letting the robot to calculate the grid frame. In our case, the part is located on a table, so the calibration grid frame is a user frame. We also saw in the camera data calibration another method of using two planes instead of one. This method is also more accurate because for perspective calibration, the camera is looking at two planes that are located 100 millimeters apart. Finally, I also explain you in more details how the offset data works. Our vision is using an offset frame to calculate the offset data of the actual part position related to the reference position. And with this, I conclude the presentation for this video. I will leave the link to the work cell on the description below. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them on the comment section.